right, the FedEx driver just dropped off this nice big box from my friends at Soaring USA. And in this box is the new NAN models Orion 2. It's an all composite 2.4 meter all arounder electric glider. So I'm gonna be making a series of short videos which will show off the details of the airframe, the equipment used, some details of the build, and eventually some test flying footage with some thermaling and aerobatics. So the Orion 2 is a redesign of the really popular Orion 1. The main design difference of the new model is the addition of an all removable tail group which makes transporting this really compact composite glider even easier. So let's open the box. I'll show you the details of the airframe parts and what servos and motor system I've picked out for the project. Of course the box came well packed. Soaring USA really knows how to pack a box for shipment. It has wood reinforcements to keep the box from getting crushed. Everything's taped in place and floats in the box. And I've gotten a lot of these big ones over the years from them. I've never had an airplane damaged. So here's the fuselage and it's a pretty standard shoulder wing layout. Carbon cloth here, not spread toe because this is more of an economical airplane, but nice carbon work here. Nan really knows how to make a nice mold and they do great carbon work here. Uh, the airfoils used are the uh, just the NAN, the uh, F3J foils, which are proven. Um, they work over a wide range of wind speeds and also wing loadings as well. You put this thing in reflex and the airfoil will fly this plane pretty fast as compared to a lot of thermal airfoils. So this airplane should perform really well in a variety of uh, wind and lift conditions, whether it be on the slope or just for thermaling. It's not a 2.4 friendly fuse. Uh, the canopy is 2.4 friendly, but plan on having the antennas run externally on this fuselage here. The nose cone is pre-cut for you, and we'll, I'll show you doing the PNC aluminum firewall install. I'll show you the details of that later. Here's the boom, pretty standard. And here's a detail of the tail boom, and this is where the design of the fuselage has really changed. Um, the old ones had a fixed blade and had a full flying stab layout. This one has the new plug-in, uh, stab set up kind of like the regular uh, F3J Explorers, the, the bigger models. So the stab has just two bolts here. Here's the push rod here, comes apart easily. And then the um, tail just plugs into these two holes here. So this thing breaks down into a really small package and that's cool. So here's the stab. Feels like it weighs about 30 grams or so, but it's really stiff. As stiff as my F3J Explorer model for sure. It's wide on top black on the bottom, two bolt holes, which is really nice is they pre-installed the horn. And here's the cutout for the rudder here. So to put it on the fuse, super easy. It's got two bolts to install. And then the push rod here just hooks right into the horn and you're done. So you can take this thing apart in just a few seconds. So here's the Orion 2 left wing. And you can see the graphics on it. Looks a little yellow. There we go, there's the orange. So it's definitely day glow orange has the swoopy tips that Nan has made famous. And uh, remember this is a four servo wing, so you're gonna need a nine channel radio to be able to finish this plane off because you have definitely separate flaps and ailerons here. So you don't need a fancy radio to fly this plane, but one with the least nine channels would be helpful. It's got the, you know, the nice black and white graphics, high viz. You can see it's nice and shiny. The mold work is uh, quite excellent. Paint lines are crisp. You know, for the price this plane is at, this is definitely excellent craftsmanship. So here's one of our goodie bags. Uh, we did get some upgrades with this plane, like a PNC firewall, some servo frames and things like that. So let's have a look what's in the bag. Here's the main wing joiner with the dihedral angle built in. So it has a couple of degrees dihedral in the middle section, which is really nice. And it's uh, all carbon with a foam core. Now one upgrade I would definitely not do without an, any electric airplane is to upgrade to a CNC aluminum firewall. And this is the PNC unit and this is set up for the new motor that I selected. Epoxy's in, makes the nose much stronger, it's super precise, it has the air holes in it and it's going to be much better than any wood or fiberglass uh, firewall that you could make by yourself. Definitely worth the extra cost. I have these installed in all my airplanes. Now for this particular airplane, I requested the DS6100s from MKS. These are really fantastic servos. I have these in all my airplanes. And you'd think that a servo this small wouldn't be 
you know, good enough for a big airplane like this. But believe me, these things are super torquey. The centering is fantastic. And even on the flaps, these are going to be absolutely fine. And uh, again, we're going to run these on rudder, elevator, flaps, and ailerons. Now, one upgrade I would definitely um, recommend doing is getting the plastic support servo frames. These have a ball bearing, which support the output gear and output axle of the servo here. And that just makes your servos run um, just a lot better, uh, more precise in the centering, and just makes them last longer because it definitely eliminates a lot of uh, some of the abuse that the servo can take, especially on the flaps here. Uh, servo frames just make installations just much, much easier. Now these are the standard voltage versions. They'll run at six volts and compared to say the HV version, but the HVs are probably overkill for this airplane. At six volts, these things are gonna have plenty of speed and torque or any kind of high performance flying you may want to do. The motor I picked is the new 1105 series 3D S in runner mated to their P22 gearbox. I know the label says 6D, but it just has the wrong sticker on it. It's a 5400 kV motor, so it's really optimized for smaller diameter propellers with higher prop speeds favoring warm liner straight line performance instead of climb efficiency. I'm going to be installing a Gropner Plus T 50 amp ESC, which should have just enough capacity for the size of props I'll be using, especially with 3S battery packs. Now, if you have a Gropner Hot compatible radio, you can program this ESC and monitor certain parameters through the built in telemetry link. Even though this ESC has an onboard BEC, I'm going to be using a separate Castle SBEC for radio power. For the spinner, I'm using a 38 millimeter. GM spinner. This is the first spinner from GM that I've seen and man the machine work is really nice on it. It doesn't have any crank into the hub or anything like that. Just a standard folding spinner using a collet instead of a set screw. Now for the props I'm using a GM set here designed to really fold cleanly against the fuselage. This is a 1610 set and I'm going to experiment with some smaller diameters too because I kind of want to go for more straight line speed versus climb torque. This will probably be the max size for the motor I've picked, and I'll go down, say, 14 or 13, keeping a 10 or an 8 pitch. Now, this particular kit didn't come with any push rods for the flaps or the ailerons. And that's no big deal. I have parts in my shop to make that, and I'm a big fan of MP Jet hardware from Europe, which I use on most of my airplanes. But I started seeing these parts show up on one of the Facebook groups, and this is uh, made by... Thomas Liu Studios. He's in uh, Taiwan and he started making his own hardware for his own planes like F3B and F3F because he wasn't happy with current hardware that was out there. And he's quite the engineer and I really like his packaging and just his philosophy to make everything really light, really clean, but you know, upgraded as far as strength and uh, everything's very precise too. So it's all CNC or 3D printed or molded. So the first thing I saw him uh, produced were these uh, aluminum clevises and they actually have the cutouts you can just get regular ones but they have that little cutout here so when the servo goes through full travel it'll actually clear the axle and that's something you usually have to do if you're using like snap links or even MP jet stuff where you have to actually grind away some of the uh, clevis to have it clear the servo axle but he's got these set up and man they're just really really high quality His packaging is nice and uh, you know the quality is outstanding to connect them to the servos, he uses these uh, pretty th robust pins with spring clips. And he actually, you can get a little tool to put the spring clips on, but they're pretty easy to do. But look how thick those are. You know, a lot thicker than, say, a, an MP jet axle or uh, like a snap link kind of thing. One of the details is like on these carbon rods here, actually has the sandpaper included to scuff up the end of the rod before you use CA or an epoxy paste to glue them into the... Uh, to into the clevis ends, so that's pretty nice. He also makes his own servo horns for MKS and uh, KSD servos too. These are some nice red aluminum ones, but he also has some uh, molded ones too. Though these might be 3D printed, I'm not sure, but man, they fit really nice and just, they're much stronger than the flimsy stock ones that the MKS comes with, especially if you want to run your uh, control horns really far inside. Uh, towards the servo axle. These are just really, really nice. So you combine that with the pins and the precision clevises, you're gonna have a really trick setup, which is 
pretty much DS worthy uh, for any plane. So I highly recommend these. And we're gonna be installing these in the wing of the Orion 2.